Hello guys, Brad here again with another fragrance review. Today I will be talking about Cartier's Declaration Dune Soir. And this is the inside of the card right there, what the bottle looks like. And inside it says, a new spicy woody freshness, a fragrance which will spice up your life with panache. This one came out in 2012 and is classified as a woody floral musk. Top notes are black pepper, cardamom and caraway, middle notes are rose and nutmeg, and in the base we have sandalwood. And at base notes, 19 positives, 1 neutral, 1 negative. So it did very well there. And um, of course, uh, it seems to me that the fragrance community does love a good rose fragrance for men. And this one is considered by many to be one of the better ones. Um, because I know a lot of guys do love a rose for the springtime and are constantly searching for a good rose fragrance. And since this one is a designer, to be able to find that in a designer is especially rewarding because you get a good price point as well. Um, but let me share my thoughts on this one. First of all, I didn't get a lot of uh, correlation with the original here. This one didn't have that heavy orange, didn't have that heavy... Indian spiciness. This one here, mostly what I got was sweet rose and uh, very little spices. Um, so the sandalwood kind of gave it like the sweet smell. The rose was there, it gave it the floral. And uh, I, don't know, I, I was expecting more spices here. A lot of people said they got a lot of spice here, but for me, the spice was just very. Uh, discreet here, not nearly as potent as the original. I really think uh, Cartier could have done better with this one. I think if they would have amped up the spices here, they could have maybe come up with something as like a counterpart to the much more expensive Le Labo Rose 31, which I actually did try and enjoyed a little bit. Um, so for me, this one just kind of hit a little bit too close to the feminine end of the spectrum for my taste. So let me get into some final scores here. Uh, the smell, I will give it 5 out of 10 for guys. I think this one is a little bit better for women. Uh, 7 out of 10 because I do know the women that have tried this one uh, do seem to like it. And a lot of guys too, but I know a lot of guys feel weird about wearing this one. And I'm in that group of guys myself. Uh, projection longevity, I thought it did pretty well for a designer fragrance. I'll say 7.5 out of 10. Let's give it three to five decent hours of projection. Versatility, this is where I think it's a little bit iffy. I would say three out of ten. I would see this one mostly for my needs, maybe sort of like a change-up fragrance for the spring. If I just wanted something with a nice floral rose effect to it. And in my case, that would be very rare, maybe once or twice per season. Uh, uniqueness, eight out of ten. You're not going to find this kind of rosiness in very many masculine fragrances and you, you get uh, very seldom do you find a, a designer that's uh, on the heavy end of floral like you got like Kenzo Power or maybe Dior Homme and for people that like those you might want to check this one out as well specifically for rose lovers price points actually um, I looked at fragrance net here and $40.15 will get you the 100 ml, so that's really good. Uh, 8 out of 10 there. But overall, I will give it 5 out of 10. Just uh, didn't quite do it for me. Uh, I'm going to stick with the more masculine end of the spectrum here. And uh, compliments didn't go very far here. One lady at work did say I smelled like a pine cone. And I could maybe see that in terms of like potpourri with pine cones and roses. But really, yeah, mostly sweet roses with just a minimal amount of spiciness that uh, was a little bit too rosy and not spicy enough for me. So thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later.